Welcome to Liaison Technologies Visibility Tool Lens, or Liaison Enterprise Navigation System. After logging into the system, you'll want to go to your profile to further define your preferences. Each person in your organization can have their own logon and password, so each user will be able to set their own settings. For example, most users in the U.S. prefer the month-day-year format for their date field. You can choose that setting here, as well as choose your time format preference, language preference, or specify the time zone you wish to see transaction logs in. If a time zone is not specified, the time zone will automatically be set by your browser's time zone every time you log into Lens. Always be sure to save your changes when done. Under the Settings tab, you're allowed to change the view of what's on your screen, from what page you land on when you log on, to how long the session will remain inactive before it logs you out. From here, you can also edit the default search and appearance of the Transactions page. Under the Shares tab, once you have created and saved a custom dashboard, layout, or filter, you can choose to share it with Lens users. Creating dashboards, layouts, and filters will be discussed in more detail later in this video. Next is the Notifications tab. Here you can set criteria which, when met, will send an alert to the specified person via email. For each notification, you can assign a name, brief description, choose from a list of special conditions, select how often the search should run, choose a previously saved transaction search filter, and to multiple email addresses using a semicolon for the alert to be sent to, and select what document information should be included in the alert. Always remember to click Save in the upper right when creating or making changes to a notification. Under Partners, at the top of your screen, there are features that allow you to add a trading partner or see if one already exists on the liaison van. So let's look at adding a new trading partner. Open the Actions drop-down menu at the top right of the screen to find these features and choose Add Trading Partner. You need to know the partner's qualifier and EDI ID, their current van provider, and of course their company name. After filling in the fields, click the Save button and you will now see a red bar at the top of the screen telling you that the ID already exists on the network or a green bar will appear to tell you that the ID has successfully saved. To see if a potential trading partner ID is already set up, choose the search trading partner option from the actions drop down menu. All you need is the qualifier and EDI ID to search the global table and see if they've already been defined. If the ID is, has already been set up, you will see the company name and the liaison mailbox information that is set up for the ID. If the ID is not set up, you will see that no trading partners were found. If the ID is not found, you may then add it if you have the van and company name. If you want to search for an existing trading partner, one that you have traded documents with in the past, you can do that by typing the name or part of the name into the trading partner search field across the top of the partners tab and then hit enter. Under the Transactions tab, you can search for transactions. There are filter options to the left, as well as at the top of your page. A few of the options available to you include sender or receiver name, delivery status, acknowledgement status, or EDI type. Ad additionally, you can narrow the search by the date that the transaction was received. You click on Date Range tab, this will open the date and time menu where you can search using a specific from and to date or by using a date relative to when you run the search. You will want to use the relative date range if you intend to save the search filter so that you can quickly rerun the search later or use it in a notification setup.
Once you have found the transactions you are looking for, you can click the arrow next to the transaction to display additional information about the transaction, or you can click the transaction timestamp. This will open the transaction details screen and you will be able to see even more information related to the transaction. From the transaction details, you can view the transaction processing log, check for re related transactions, view the payload contents, overview the EDI details, and this will also this is also one of the three places you will find the reprocess button at the top right of the screen. The other place is on the transaction search page at the far right by clicking the gear icon for the file you wish to resend. Lastly, under the actions drop down menu at the top of the page, you will find a reprocess results, which will reprocess all messages currently found in your search. Note, to use the batch reprocess, you will need to narrow your search results until 200 or fewer transactions have been found. Previously, we mentioned using saved layouts and filters. You can create these from the transactions page. To create a custom layout, click on the layouts drop-down menu. And under this, you'll click create new layout. From here, you can select which column headings you wish to display on the transactions page. You can completely customize the fields or you can fill in the columns with default fields. Use the plus sign to add columns or use the X to remove columns. Once you have the layout built you, how you would like it, give the layout a name and click Save. Now that we have built and saved the layout, let's narrow our data down to create a filter and then save it. Once you have saved the filter, you can rerun the filter later simply by selecting the saved filter from the filters drop down menu. Here we're going to choose the last seven days. And you'll, again, you'll save this filter by selecting filters and then save current filter. All you need to do is give the filter a name. Remember, you will want to use a relative date range if you're using the data to narrow the results for a saved search filter. Once you have saved your customized layouts and filters, you can quickly switch back to them from Layouts and Filters drop-down menu. You can also edit, delete, or share your saved layouts and filters with other Lens users using these drop-down menus. After building the filter, you may want to capture some of the information to a spreadsheet to share with others. That can be done on the transaction screen by selecting the export to CSV file option under the actions drop-down menu. From the export to CSV file screen, give the file name, choose which delimiter you wish to use for separating the columns, and set the maximum row count. To finish, you just choose the fields you wish to include in the file and click the Save button. The last area is Dashboards, 
With dashboards, you can monitor transaction metrics at a glance. To set up a new dashboard, click on Create New at the top left. Next, give your new dashboard a name and click on the Create New to the right. Once you have a new dashboard started, you will want to add new widgets to your dashboard. Click on any of the Add New Widget windows. A widget can display many types of information, include top message counts, data volume trends, or even be a place to leave yourself notes. To save the widget, give it a name and then click on the check mark. You can always go back and edit a widget by clicking on the pencil icon. After setting up your widgets, don't forget to save the dashboard by clicking on the Done in the upper right corner of the page. You can then switch between your saved dashboards by clicking, clicking on the Lens Dashboard drop-down menu in the upper left corner of the Dashboards page. We hope you can see the value of this visit new visibility tool and we thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please contact us via email at support at liaison.com. That's S-U-P-P-O-R-T at L-I-A-I-S-O-N dot com or by phone at 866-830-3600.